Hello and welcome back to Robbie's Arcade. Remember, winners don't use drugs. Welcome to uh, this video on Golden Axe. Now let's face it, Golden Axe is one of those licenses that has gone completely into obscurity and in many respects it's not fair because walk-along beat-em-ups were kind of hugely popular at the crossing over of the 80s and the 90s. And, you know, we talk about Streets of Rage. Streets of Rage is a license title that, you know, is still remembered today even though a Streets of Rage game hasn't been released in donkey's years. Then the likes of Final Fight and other walk-along beat-em-up games, Double Dragon. But Golden Axe was there all along as well. This game was released in 1989, for God's sake. So we are talking about a game that's 28 years old. That's insane. Now, this uh, Golden Axe was originally an arcade-only port that went to other systems, and we'll talk about that later on. But it's a walk-along beat-em-up, very much in the same vein as a number of walk-along beat-em-ups. And it was... <coughs> comparatively primitive I would go as far as to say it was one of those games that when it was released was probably quite groundbreaking and had quite good music particularly for an 89 game it's very nice um, but at the same time obviously there was a huge increase in production and quality of remember that guy um, a huge increase in production and quality of games um, in the turning of the 80s and the 90s and some of the best content in gaming happened between 1988 and 1993 and unfortunately this game just wasn't quite there at the right time there were other games and we'll talk about those later on but golden axe for me is one of those games that does not get enough respect it's a two two power walk on beat up it has a very sophisticated system in a number of places uh, regarding magic bars and how you utilize um, the advantages that are provided to you walk along vehicles running that kind of stuff like that that wasn't really introduced and the magic and stuff like that it was cool anyway i'll talk about more about the game as we continue but let's play mr swordsman first he even had a quite a good plot as well oh, oh poor fella Poor old Alex, he's brown bread. So again, shouldn't come as a huge surprise, walk along beat them up there. The sprites, this is already quite an unusual thing. They don't just make the sprite disappear. They do show its corpse, so to speak, and its greyed out corpse. Oh. Now the buttons, it's a three button system. So we've got um, the attack button, a jump button, and a magic button and we'll save the magic for when we need it oh no we killed that fella as well but yeah just the idea of the run functionality as well now this little bugger is the guy you get magic from obviously the more magic bottles you've got the more sophisticated the magic you can utilize the energy bar as you may have also noticed was um just a bar system and it wasn't really a bar that would deplete over time you could just take individual hits but really what we want is to get as much of these little guys as possible let's carry on here oh look at that we're at four magic now, I don't know what happened at this stage, but again, just like the walk-along attack, I know it seems silly to highlight that as an, add something advantageous, but it was just something that didn't really happen. If you look at the original Streets of Rage and the original Final Fight, they didn't have that running functionality. They just took for granted that you would just be happy to walk along at a snail's pace. So let's see what the magic has for these fellas. And what I just unleashed was a nuke. I believe and there we go that was a boss a boss that's normally quite annoying oh but just the little things like that the idea that it wasn't just a case of utilizing a special you could choose to hold back and not release that and therefore get an even better version later on i know it sounds really silly to highlight these things but again 1989 arcade game look oh, we got the civilians and everything there let's have a look at this thing again shouldn't be hugely surprised that sprites are being reused again and again bit disappointed but again 
With the limited size CPU and of course the memory of these items, the repetition of certain characters makes sense. But most players would try their hardest not to use the magic, something that would eventually be carried over to the console versions of this game. It should be said that when you uh, are bumped over, that doesn't um, take away health when someone does the running uh, attack. However, a direct hit or combo will deplete your health. So there's more of the civilians. Oh, and they're trying to get the dragon back. Oh, it's... See again, and quite, I'm not going to call it sophisticated AI, but that time she didn't try to jump on the, the creature. Given my health is running low, it might be prudent for me to take advantage of that magic before I lose it. And look at that, I've only used one life so far. I'll be honest, I'm quite impressed with this. Of course, if you utilise the magic uh, much earlier on, you won't get that explosive one I utilised earlier on. That's not good, that's not good at all. Again, one thing that is missing from this, and again, I can't really complain, I just want to highlight it, is just the lack of energy bars of your opponent, a feature that was introduced much later on in future walk-along beat-em-ups. A lot of people like that because it made it feel slightly less uh, repetitious to know just how much health you were depleting from your enemies. It's like now I have no idea how effective my attacks are. I also think the hit detection on this game is astonishingly bad. Oh, we've got a new sprite as well. Okay, well that's just irritating. Nice, set fire to a skeleton, that's logic. Okay, that was accidental, but it'd be fun to see what happens. Not bad, back where I was before, why not? Didn't pick up the health though, that was most foolish. Let's pause this and talk about some trivia and facts. And let's face it, a game like this does have lineage in history, because I think everyone's heard of Golden Axe in one shape or form, whether it's referenced as a game from the past or one of Sega's big back catalogue. It was developed by Sega, utilising their own 16B hardware, which is a 16-bit arcade system. It was released back in May 1989, um, which again is a strange time to release arcade machines, and again, that was in Japan and eventually worldwide within the year. The game is also known as, and I quote, Guruden Akusu. Uh, that is the literal translation of that symbol behind Golden Axe, which means Golden Axe. Now, the plot of the game is you play as one of three warriors hell-bent on revenge, horrible word, against the vile dictator Death Adder, who features in subsequent games. Um, Death Adder has taken over the once peaceful land of Uria and murdered your friend and partner, Alex. Now, they say partner. Let's be, it's 2017, let's be modern. Um, now, the physical Golden Axe, let's face it, the title piece of the game, the Golden Axe, actually only features in one place in the whole game. And that is it being utilised in the first game. It's utilised as the, uh, the dwarf has it as an axe. That's the only Golden Axe in the game. The last boss who has an axe, most of the, of the original releases of the Golden Axe arcade machine did not feature a Golden Axe uh, well, uh, wielded by Death Adder. That had to be added later on. So the only Golden Axe in the entire game is the one held by the Dwarf. And that isn't even the iconic part of the series. Um, so it, and obviously subsequent games it was added, but all the console ports didn't include a Golden Axe either. Now, 
the, uh, talking about um, arcade ports, once again, this is a very well-known game. It was released on as follows. The Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis, if you're in America. The Mega CD, the Sega Game Gear, the Sega Master System, the Sega Mega Play console, the Virtual Console, iOS, Android, Microsoft Windows, and next-gen stores have it listed on their digital downloads. So, there is a huge amount of history here for Golden Axe in a game that exists. However... It's the last release game was back in 2008, and that was, I believe, Golden Axe, some sort of fancy special edition. But on top of that, the game has been released in numerous versions throughout time, and not just a chronological uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 scenario. They were Golden Axe, Golden Axe 2, Golden Axe Revenge of the Death Adder, someone recommended that, and that will be on the channel shortly. Golden Axe 3, so it wasn't a literal sequel to 2. Golden Axe Beast Rider, Golden Axe Axe Warrior, Go Axe Battler, The Legend of Golden Axe. Someone played Creative License with sentences there. And finally, Golden Axe, The Jewel. And that's also going to be on the channel later in the year. And I can't wait to play that because it sounds dreadful. Um, but, needless to say, uh, the Golden Axe game for me does have a huge amount of history. It is a very interesting game. Um, but one thing that does let it down for me is the audio. The music's not that bad. And for a 1989 game... Um, it is quite compelling. It's got that slightly twinky twonky storytelling sort sound effect. But it was the attacks themselves and the noises the monsters make. They're quite um, disjointed and they don't really fit in. And I looked into it and apparently they are digital screams taken from popular movies. Uh, most notably Conan the Barbarian and First Blood. And that is, in, that is completely true. You can look it up. Um, so a lot of the audio stuff has been taken from those movies. Which, whether that was time-saving or they just bought the same sound effect package, who knows. But it's so weird to hear the clinky-clonky music and then quite an almost realistic uh, sort of sound effect there. Anyway, let's get back into the game with me not making weird noises. Apparently we, uh, the village was on the back of a giant turtle. How, uh, how very great you're in. The scenery's got very dull, hasn't it? I can't see a huge amount of difference between the previous one, to be perfectly honest. Oh. I think me and this fire dragon should be having fun. Hopefully the game lets me hold on to this for a while. Oh, no. Oh, no. Missed my chance. Now the hit detection is quite appalling in this game. And I'm not going to say that, I'm not going to give them the excuse of it being the 1980s because hit detection isn't a new thing. The enemy's hit detection seems to hit every single time. With mine, less so. Let's see what Mr. Flameface has got to say. Okay, I can't even... Oh, okay, we're at the maximum magic, and there, I believe I'm still on the turtle. So the music has changed. It's quite nice. I don't know if you can hear that quite clearly there. Let's have a look. Oh, this guy. Oh, no, it didn't give me enough distance. Well, you know what? It worked last time bloody well. Let's give it another go, shall we? Oh no, it's not as hot a technique this time around, is it? Oh, nice. Number of players that must have rushed around to make sure they got as many of those as possible. I feel their pain. See if we can get ourselves another boss, shall we? Well, that's not Death Adder, but it'll do. Oh dear. Okay, let's see what damage this can do to this fella. Oh no. Now the hit detection is quite appalling on this. I'm a little disappointed by the game's lack of fortitude on that score. Oh, I believe I've defeated the boss. 
If that wasn't a boss, I don't want to know what the boss was. We're going to get ourselves another bonus stage? One would hope so. I think we all know I don't care too much about the vitality, but apparently I haven't got a lot of choice. So we got a little bit of magic there, but what's that going to do? Okay, the turtles, what's it where's it taking us? Okay, let's carry on. Again, the scenery's become incredibly repetitive. I'm very disappointed in that. Think of the, the release of the likes of Final Fight and Streets of Rage, etc, etc. Um, even the popular walk-along beat-em-up game, uh, Double Dragon, that came out incredibly, uh, you, know, uh, you know, even prior to this game. And it had more impressive visuals than this. Don't get me wrong, the character sprites are fantastic. So I shouldn't really be that churlish, but these background uh, graphics do seem to be a tad limited. Now, call me crazy, but am I on the back of a bird? And if so, why is there a skeleton on the back of a bird? Let's have a look. Well, that was just frustrating. Oof. Well, that was just humiliating, wasn't it? Let's see if we can do about this skeleton. Oh no, see that felt terrible to me. Oh, and there we go, our credits run out. But not bad for a single credit, I've got to say, I think I did myself proud. So, that was Gold Next, the original arcade game from Sega. If you want to see more games on this uh, channel, ones that you want to see, do pop it down there in the comments. But otherwise, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Let's see what the game over screen looks like for this bad boy, shall we? A little bit underwhelming. A little bit underwhelming. Oh, we are getting some information, though. That's not bad. I imagine people being very competitive about a strength rating at the end of a game. That seems like something you I would get very competitive about when I was a teenager. Anyway, well there you go. That was Golden X. Thanks. See you next time.